Okay, well, the heat has begun. Dave Winchester, Magno Passos, the first heat of round four. Um, this will be a, this should be a great heat. There's going to be some good, hopefully some awesome action. Hopefully the waves cooperate and we get some some ramps and some barrels for these guys to demonstrate what they're capable of because they're both capable of great things. So again, in this heat, Winchester, Magna Passos, and Winchester has been a guy that has always done so well here. He's won here before, he's got second year before, had a classic battle with GT as well, and he's going to draw first blood right here on this left, Mike. Yeah, so he kind of scoops down. This looks like a good way for him. Oh, just classic. Looks like a pretty good long barrel. Let's see how can he get through the end. Oh, no. Seems like a lot of guys are just, they're not really driving through that like um, you would expect them to with that end bit coming down. Maybe it just looks like it's more makeable from their perspective. But man, that one, I think I would have just been on the gas the whole time. It seems like a lot of the riders are getting so greedy like, out here. You know, I see these guys riding these barrels and they're trying to just draw it out too long instead of trying to duck out the little doggy door or whatever. Yeah, here's Magno on his. Okay, Magno stalling. Looks like his one is a little bit... Yeah, so more successful. Yeah, so he, forward he's, definitely gonna, he's definitely going to get um, uh, a, a higher score for that. Obviously, he made the barrel and you know did a couple moves to to, to boot. So you know, good little opener for Magno. Um, you know, hopefully uh, these guys kind of warm up a little bit and get things rolling. There's that so replay. Nice, nice pocket roll ride. Out. Nice, nice pocket riding by Magno. Um, right into a roll. Just, you know, just mixing it up at the end. Is that a Magno in your pocket? Are you happy to see <laughs> it? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Mike's getting reserved in his, uh, as an elder statesman. <laughs> <laughs> Little do you know. <laughs> okay. I can't believe you never made it down here before a couple of years ago. What was, oh, well, eight years, tell me about your experience in Peru. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I went, I, I came, I guess it was in the, the 90s, and we had a contest down there. It was awesome. Went to Machu Picchu. That uh, was a great experience. Um, well, you know we're not really not that far. Like Lake Titicaca is only a few hundred miles away. What, from? Uh, from here. Oh. It's not very far. Machu Picchu? No, T Titicaca. Oh, but that's still some of the same ruins and same civilizations up there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't been there. Don't know much about that. Well, I had a yeah. chance to go to the... Uh, Alex Oranga checking out his battle wounds. I had a chance to go to the, uh, uh, the one of the local museums here yesterday afternoon. Oh, cool. Yeah. You got to it. And uh, I got yeah, a chance you know, to check it, out some this, of the mummies. Eureka uh, is a, an amazing place, man. It, it, it is really unique. Um, I think I've said in the past. So they got official results. Dave Hubbard in first. Dallas Singer got second. Alex Aranga in third. Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's getting back to Eureka. It's a it's a really cool place. You know, it's it's so different from anywhere else I've ever been to. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the uh, civilizations here are the oldest in the world. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, you know, they have some mummies and different stuff, and, and they actually don't do nearly as much processing. That's a puma right there. It's a mummified puma. So I'm showing Mike some of my pictures from the, uh, from the museum yesterday, but uh, they actually have tons of mummies all over here, and they don't do nearly as much to set up, uh, to, to set up the mummies as, like, say, the Egyptians do, because the Atacama is so dry, and there's so little salt in the air and the environment that uh, they don't even really need to. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was talking to Ben Player, and he, he he was telling me that they basically the family members uh, disorgan their other family members that have passed away. Oh, here we go. Uh, Dave winning up. Nice wave. His first score was a three driving okay, that this barrel. Is, this is looking oh, a lot better. From, oh, that lip just kind of came down on him in the Jeez. end. Oh man. I thought he was for sure coming out of that one driving for so long. I thought he'd pop out the the white water. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, you can probably, if you go on Google and, and type in the Eureka Museum, you'll probably be able to see some pretty neat mummies. Yeah. But anyway, back Look to the action Winnie, here. Winnie. Driving, driving, pushing, and he, he turned up a little yeah, bit there. Like I, thought, that, I think he had that. I mean, I, I mean, I thought he had it. It, it You know, and then that last bit just kind of came down on him. Um, so that was unfortunate. So that's two for two for, for uh, 
for Dave, you know. Um, but early days, you know, this is like, a, a tw you know, we're down to 23 minutes. Only a few minutes have, have passed. And so, uh, yeah, there's still lots of time. You know, these guys are probably just warming up at this point. Yeah, we have just about a six, just over six minutes gone in the 30 minute heat. And Winchester now with two nice looking lefts and neither of them stayed open long enough for him to find an escape from that barrel. So Magno Passos definitely has uh, the priority out there. He's sitting out the back waiting for a, a nice set wave to put up a good score. Good size set coming through right here, Mike. Okay, big set. <laughs> here is Magno, Magno on the right. Look at this. Right. Can you, I think that's his wife screaming on the beach. It's pretty Finding good. Finding okay, a barrel. Yeah, nice, little, nice little pocket there at the beginning. Let's see. He's waiting for something here. Oh. oh. You know, Magno, I haven't seen him surf the right very often, and I'm, I'm not too, too sure how familiar he is with it. Um, but, yeah, that wave did, just didn't cooperate for him. He did get a little barrel at the beginning, though, and certainly better than not making the barrel. So he's, he'd be ahead by now. Look at this big set coming through that left. Wow. That's a sizable wave right there. That's pretty sizable. And look at that thing run right there. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So this is uh, one of the larger sets we've seen today, as you see the ever-so-dangerous presence of the rocks on the inside here at El Gringo or flopos as it is known by the locals. Yeah, so that's what you end up on if you get pushed through and everyone that's served this place for any length of time has experienced it. And there's like, uh, I was saying, I've said it over and over again, there's like no graceful way to deal with the rocks here. Like, they're so uneven, there's so much surge coming up. Like, you get up on there and you just get washed around like a, just feel like a carcass. You yeah. know, just wa getting washed up the, the rocks. It's just it's pretty horrible. <laughs> I got, I got, just it was so humiliating, man. It was just such a big, biggest slice of humble pie. I came over here and I, I did a roll and I figured oh, I'll just write it out. I'll write it out. I'll just kind of, you know, um, just kind of raise the nose back up a little bit and just let the white water go around me. Well, it picked me up and shot me forward right into the rocks. <laughs> and then I just tumbled like for, it just seemed for an eternity, just tumbling over the rocks, uno, uno, dos, just getting uno, dos. banged up. And I stood up and it was like all uneven. It's like, then I got pulled back down. And it just like, just took a beating. <laughs> just felt like a total idiot. It doesn't sound like any violence. Let's take a look at this wave right here. Okay, Winchester Wayne, yeah. paddling as he's setting up on the left. Look at this, yeah. fading into that left. Okay, this this way might oh, in and out. Yeah, uh, didn't really didn't really run like he was hoping. Okay, well we do have Yo Yo, the man, the myth, the legend here in Chile. He is on the beach with our heat winner. Good morning, everyone, and here we are with Dave Hoover, winner of the first heat of this morning. Dave, tell us about this heat, please. Well, as um. We've been waiting since uh, yesterday afternoon for the heat. You know, we paddled out and then they put us on hold. Uh, the conditions weren't as good then, so we were all really anxious to surf that heat. It was very tight until you get these right waves. Tell us about what's going on with this wave. Well, I knew the right would have, you know, some big sections, and so I was hoping to, to find one, and I was able to do a big roll, and uh, that was able to give me some good points. I was really stoked. Congratulations, Dave. You would, like, would you like to sell some greetings to come? Yeah, of course. Aloha to my family, friends, everybody watching. Really appreciate it. And all the global audience, it's really awesome to have your support. Aloha. Mahalo. Aloha. Back to you guys. Pretty yo -yo. We do have some scores coming through now. So Magno got a 3.8 on his last wave. Dave Winchester with a 3.95. So currently Magno Passos is in the lead. With, with a, a 5.38 and a 3.8, 3 yeah. And Dave Winchester with a 6.95. But I'll tell you what, what right now, Dave is going to be looking to get rid of all those scores that he has so far. Yeah, for he sure. He doesn't want to keep any of those. He's got a, he's got a couple sticks, as they call them. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see, Magno... Um, his first wave was a 5.38. I'm not sure if uh, everyone knows that. So he got a 5.38 and a 3.8. So that first one was, you know, the best wave of the heat so far, which is, which is um, kind of surprising, actually. I, I would have thought that there'd be a little bit more action and 
you know, maybe the swells. The swells have been pretty mixed up and kind of confused. Um, unfortunately, the forecast is it's tapering off until the weekend, and we run out of holding period. So it's kind of now, run it now in these conditions, or run it, uh, as, it as it gets smaller. So um, we're, we're kind of, uh, I think the organizers are kind of thinking this, this is probably the, the better day for the action. So yeah, here we are. It's I mean, just like uh, wave selection is a is a part of the game. I guess day selection is a part of the game for Alex Leon. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other thing that's happening right now is there's a tidal. Uh, the tide's kind of peaking out, so there's kind of like a tidal lull. Usually, when the when the tide hits the bottom or the top or just it's in transition, there seems to be a less surf activity for some reason. And it seems like that's kind of a global phenomenon. So there's a little break in the action. So we're down to about 20 minutes now. And uh, gosh, it seems like this heat hasn't even really begun. Yeah, I mean, neither of these guys have really got anything to write home about quite yet. But we know they're both certainly very capable of it. And man, in those four-man heats, Winchester was just absolutely dominating uh, earlier in the contest. And uh, we're going to see if he's going to be able to continue that streak and keep his hopes alive here at the Chilean challenge in Riga. So yeah, getting back to Arica, um one of the things I like about it is the desert. You know, we're, we're next to the driest desert in the world, which is the Anacana Desert. And uh, man, I just love the desert. I just love the solitude and just, it's just so vast and the open, open area. And it's just well, neat. It just seems otherworldly. And when, and when Mike talks about the driest desert in the world, he means the driest desert in the world. There are some spots in this desert where it has not rained for over 300 years, not once. Okay, here, see, look at this wave. Magno taking off deep in the barrel. Look oh, at that. Nice wave for Magno. Did a roll section, no? In and out before he goes onto the reef. So now so David Winchester will have priority as D Magno Passos got a decent left barrel there with gonna be a good score yeah that should be a good score that'll that'll definitely help his uh oh nice barrel disappears from view there for a moment yep and then he's just out so this is going to put some pressure on winnie let's see winnie's going to have to uh oh, winnie's he's been so perfect Shocks. here it yeah, almost he's... seems like he could malfunction this heat yeah, this, he needs, he needs uh, something big. But when he's capable of big things, so as is both of these riders. So that last wave of Magno definitely betters his campaign. He's got a 6.5. Here's Dave. Kind of that wave just did not cooperate with him, you know. And so he just elected, you know what, just, just get out of here. Looks like he's just so, playing the waiting game right there. Yeah. You know, you pr it, if you get too far behind the eight ball, it's... You know, it can really work against you. Magno scooping well into that one. And that was just well great from that angle. Yeah, well positioned from this angle. Looked great. The Brazilian Same Magno Passos disappearing there from the back, looking good. We're gonna see a score coming in for him in just a moment. So yeah, I think uh, in in Dave's case, you know, because he doesn't really have any good scores, he just really has to think about building his score base instead of uh, you know just getting a ten on his on the one wave because. You'll get to a point where uh, you'll be in a heat and you need a big score and you start waiting and waiting and get it. It's kind of a trap, you know. So he only needs a 7.93, which is it's a pretty high score, but you know, with winning in the water, uh, it's totally feasible. There's Omri's unique uh, stretching method that he uses to warm up for his heats. Seems to be fairly, fairly, uh, fairly effective. <laughs> so scores coming through uh, Magna Passes with a 6.5 on that barrel on the left uh, Winnie with a 1.68 on that way they just dropped in on a cutout so still Winnie carrying a 3 and a 3.95 is the scoring waves he wants to get rid of those Magna leading the heat with a 5.3 and a 6.5 yeah Omri's got he does uh, he trains Jiu Jitsu and he's got really good core strength look at a little seal on the inside there I think the seals want in on the action. They seem to be everywhere right here. And I see one in the in the distance, uh, just under those birds that flew by. And then, uh, yeah, there's another. See them on the inside? Man, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, it's cool to see them. 
I want to see the seal body serving contest. Okay, it looks like a little wave coming in here. Look at this set. We can see a rider on it. We do. It's okay, Alex Mag I'm sorry, Magno. Magno Passos. Yep, back up and riding. Uh, he's going to go around this. Yeah, not much. Didn't really, gosh, didn't really, uh, didn't really do it for him. So I think that, you know, the, the thing, um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, Alan, getting ready, super, he's going to be super excited, compete, and uh, that's going to be a, another great heat between him and uh, Benny. So, uh, yeah, this should be some pretty good, pretty, pretty exciting to watch. You can see Omri kind of stretching in the back there. And uh, Alan trying to stay focused. So definitely changing conditions throughout every day we've been here. I mean, the first day was clean and, and uh, much smaller than yesterday. Yesterday, the wave's getting way bigger, way more consistent, just piling through all day long, almost making, almost making some of the conditions difficult on some of the guys. And, and now today, the size has backed off. The wave's cleaned up a little bit, but there certainly aren't as many waves. So we have these guys waiting and uh, probably getting nervous. So there you got it. Those two guys right there. Great shot. Jeff Hubbard and, and GT, the guys up against each other. And for, J for Jeff, this is almost like a world title heat because if he goes down in this heat to GT, his, his you know, the title race as it is right now is, is mere points spreading everyone. So it'll, it'll put Ben and, and, uh, and uh, Omri in a much better position um, or whoever wins this event, you know. So, but if he, if he passes... Uh, that's going to be one of his biggest hurdles. I think if he gets through that heat, that's definitely one of his, you know, biggest hurdles. He's 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 got a tough, tough road to the final. Not that any final, you know, road to the final is easy, but in this case, he's meeting a formidable competitor early on. Um, GT a multiple winner out here. Jeff a multiple winner out here. So sure. that's 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 going to be cool. You know, I was having dinner last night, and uh, those guys were eating, and we were all sitting down together. It's pretty interesting to see the. Uh, <laughs> kind of the, the dynamic but you know it's so, so cool these guys are everyone's pretty uh pretty you know cool with each other outside of the heat and you know once once the jerseys get on it's a different story but man there's such good camaraderie amongst the bodyboarders they're such good guys and hey, look how and close these waves are together. to be part of the whole thing wow look at this set coming through mike definitely oh, some size set. see these guys get they get caught inside or what yeah okay that's wow a, that was a big one that just closed out everything so let's see uh Man, I had, I had a bail yesterday, and, and uh, fortunately my lease held, but okay, so it looks like they, they maybe were just on the outside of that, or they got through that, so, but uh, yeah, getting caught out here is pretty gnarly. It's like being at Portal or something, big Portal, and a big, huge set will break, and a lot of times it'll be top to bottom, and the problem is it's not sand that you get washed up onto, it's, it's reef, so it's really a, the end of your heat if you if you lose, break your leash, snap your, you know, snap your leash. And we saw that happen yesterday yeah, more than you're, once. You're done. So there's always this line out there that you're thinking about. Okay, you don't want to be too far inside and get caught inside and, you know, potentially lose your board or get washed onto the reef. And then uh, being too far out, not being able to catch him or not being able to catch enough of them. Tomega psyching out. Yeah, one of, the, one so, of the more fierce competitors in the history of bodyboarding. You know, a, guy, a really intense guy, a guy who shows no fear, right? Yeah, GT is is the competitor um, when it comes to bodyboarding. I mean, I I know him well over the years and years of of, of meeting up with him, and he's a formidable competitor. So, uh, you know, it doesn't take much. Like he doesn't need much practicing. It's he's got a strong will, and he's a tough guy to beat. So, this heat is going to be it's going to be sick to watch. I mean, yeah. Jeff's in form, GT's in form. Um, yeah, it'll be it'll be a, a real high level comp heat. And there might be some interesting things you can learn from it as far as uh, competition strategies and just how they approach different things. They're, they're both very sophisticated when it comes to strategy. And, you know, they're going to use the priority and all the little facets of, of the rules to their total advantage because at this level you pretty much need every little foothold that you can get to, to, to get ahead. You know, uh, this is not the first time that uh, 
Jeff and GT have had a heat together where they've really battled it out. I mean, last year they had a final in, uh, in Porto last year, correct? Yeah, I mean, you know, th these guys have gone up against each other quite a few times. So that's going to be a, that's gonna be a, a and, uh, crazy heat. Hubby won that heat, and the tactics and the uh, priority and all that stuff certainly played into it last year. Yeah, yeah. It, it, um, um, yeah, Jeff's tough to beat. You know, his, um, he's got, uh, you know, he's, a, he's got the whole thing, you know. He can do some crazy errors that, that can almost always get him out of, out of trouble. And he's such a small, compact guy um, that, you know, he only weighs like 140 pounds or something. So I look at him, I go, hey, here's a 50-pound here's a bag of dog food. You know, here, put this on your board. <laughs> this is what I do with. <laughs> Which works to my advantage when it's bigger. But, man, he can fly on anything. Yeah, for sure. 100%. And, uh, you know, the other night it was pretty classic. We were, uh, we, uh, they, you know, Magno organized this uh, kind of surprise party for me. And all the, all the boys were there. And it was just so awesome. And I was hugging guys. And it was like, man, I, I hugged Jeff. And it was like somebody threw a cat at me. <laughs> I was just like this small, wiry guy that was like, you know, just hard little, it's like a, <coughs> somebody threw a cat. It was pretty funny. But his, uh, yeah, he's, um, he, he's in really good shape um, and very you know, strong, great do, core strength. And do, do you know he got upset with me for calling him the flying squirrel last event? <laughs> Why is that? He said nobody calls him that anymore, so I'll <laughs> call him that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call him that every time then. <laughs> Here he is in red, Dave Winchester. Maybe finally oh, look at that wave. score he's looking for. Look at the barrel. Okay. This is what Dave's looking for. Nice oh. barrel. In and out. Long that great. barrel that Good time. long barrel, deep. He rode that very well. Okay, that'll put him back on the map. In fact, that might move him into the lead. That was a great wave by Dave. Good. I mean, so, he drove that barrel a long time. You know, he's got the patience. Speed. You know, that, He waited a good 10 minutes, 15, you know, 12, 15 minutes for that wave. And, uh, it, you know, it seemed like it paid off. That was a great wave. Probably the best barrel of the, of the heat. Let's take a look at the replay here at the Eureka Chilean Challenge. So deep right there. So, yeah, it kind of does like a little check stall there. Stalls again, gets yeah. back into the another section and comes out. So Dave Winchester taking advantage of that wave, and we see another angle from the back. And, man, he, like I said... He, yeah, he did get to scoop into that. He changed the second time that barrel and adjusted again. Yeah, just that was to, uh, really good. So uh, from the judge's perspective, which is this one. Wow, good score there for Dave Winchester. Oh, wow, so he just has it. Wow, so that's that puts the pressure on back onto Magno. Because Magno's highest score is 6.5, so... Okay, so now it's a scramble mode for Winnie. That's not that's a that's not much. That's like an air. That's like a flip. That's like a good roll. That's a you know that's just about anything that Dave can pull out of his bag of tricks. Let's see if Magno can pick up the pace here. Try to put some dis distance between him and, and Dave. Winnie almost looking to go on that one right there to get that four point eight. Yeah, he's got to be careful, though, because with five minutes left, you know, a lot can happen. You know, as we've seen before, you know, you can win a contest in five minutes. It only takes a few minutes, especially on the left. You know, you can, you can pack two good scores and, and basically come from fourth to first. Yeah, real quick. You can get that lead real quick or you can lose it real quick. Here's uh, Magno. Okay, so pressure's on Magno. He needs to find that wave, and uh, he'd be he'd be. Uh, let's see here. Looks like some lines coming out the back as well. Yep. It's strange that you know this angle just makes it look so small. Looks like it's two feet out there. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's kind of strange. Well, I think it's the. Uh Maybe it's just, just the, the color the fact, of the water, yeah, the gray, gray watercolor, no contrast. Yeah, and, uh, perception. And then yeah. But the and other the thing, I guess, it's on your mind, so too, much. when you're on these waves. Okay, here's the set. I can see it on the screen coming in. Look at that. See that white water pop up out there. Um, 
you know, is the, the, the reef on the inside is always on your mind. Like, okay, where is that in relationship to where I'm at? And, you know, how much, how much latitude do I have? Am, am I going to get, am I going to smash this thing? <coughs> okay, so it looks like Winnie might be uh, trying to put some pressure on to, to Magno, see if he can sell him a wave or two. <laughs> Look at this set. Okay, this is a pretty good wave. Pro probably a smart move from Winnie. That looks like not a bad wave. Yeah. So we can just get an air. What's he going to do? Whoa. Wow. I don't know. He, oh. I think he might make that. That looked like a, oh, made it. That was a huge wow. wave for Winnie. And, you know, he's got to kind of ride it out. So I, I'm claiming that's a make, man, for sure, you know. But now this is what I was talking about, the awkwardness. Now, fortunately, he might be in far enough that he's cool. Two now Magno answering back. Though. Let's see. Magno, Magno needs something big here. Oh, he needed to hit that. He's got two minutes. He's better jammed. So you know, Winnie should actually jump back in the water, too. He's trying to figure it out. I would jump in, man. You got two you minutes, can buddy. Two minutes to get all the way out there? Yeah. It would take you about a minute. And you maybe get something on the inside. Look at this. Just boosting on the this left. This is huge. Clicking all the way out of the water. Projecting out in front as well. That was Good heavy. Style. You know, he landed right in the V, too. For him to... Yeah, that's going to pretty much Whoa. seal it for Winnie. That was massive. That was heavy because he, he came right into the V, and, you know, you'd expect that uh, upward explosion to kind of just buckle him, but it, he somehow penetrated that and got right on the other side of it. That was really nice. And so, he, you know, he made it pretty smooth there, and you could kind of see him the whole time, and that was it's definitely a make. Wow, that was so Dave Winchester. Absolutely massive score for a big one move. Yeah, handling the pressure, coming through with a big invert on that left. And man, it's going to be tough. I mean, Magno Passos is in, he's in combo. Yeah, so you're going to see Magno, if, he, if, the, if the wave happens, he's going to go absolutely cuckoo. He's comboed, though. Is he comboed? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's impossible. He's in combo land. Oh, he is comboed. Well, I think you'll still see him go cuckoo. <laughs> Uh, that would make, you know, when you come in like that, you're just, like, elated. And up until that point, it was kind of, he was, it was on yeah. the fence. It was a nail-biter for him, for you sure. Know? It was on the fence. He didn't know. But, uh, gosh, that's great. He'd be super excited about that. Well, he we talked about how well Dave Winchester has done here all along over the years, including in this contest. And, man, he came through this time. Yeah, that, that, no exception. He was doing his thing. And let's see. With, Less than 30 seconds, that'll be the end of Magno's campaign here. But Magno's with his wife, he'll enjoy his time here in Eureka. He'll, he'll go, you know, up probably to the desert a little bit and inland maybe to the Hummingbird Park and, you know, um, check out some of the local cuisine. There's some here and even Peru, man. I, you know, I couldn't believe how good the food is. There's some great, great food. Okay, so that's... That is it for Magno that's Passos. That's it for Magno.